Welcome back to another Word VBA tutorial. So today we are going to be kicking off an interesting series, or at least I think it's a very interesting series, which is Mail Merge. So Mail Merge is a feature that exists in Microsoft Word that allows you to take something like a data source. So for example, an Excel spreadsheet it could be an access database. There actually could be many different types of data sources, but the idea behind it is you have a data source and it's usually in some type of tabular format like this. And you want to create either documents, so like maybe like a letter, maybe an email, and in some cases, even a directory. And you basically have these templates of a document. And then what you would do is you take each field in this particular table and you would fill out the different portions of that document with the specified information. So it's a nice way to automate the creation of bulk documents. So for example, letters. So maybe I have a list of address and I need to print out multiple envelopes for each one of those addresses. So mail merge is a feature you would love to use because it's going to help automate that process. So as you can see here, we have a small data set, nothing crazy but we can clearly see it's structured. So we have some field names and then inside of those field names are some values. Now this is all just fake data, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this information and we're gonna populate it into this particular template. And so right now we're not gonna get to this exact portion yet. This is gonna take multiple videos to build up the foundation necessary to understand the different components of mail merge and then finally put them all together and then from there, do an automated run. So this is gonna be a combination of using Word VBA with a little bit of possibly looking into some Excel VBA and seeing how we can merge the two when it comes to taking this information and making it worthwhile. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about how do we define a data source, right? So we want to define a data source in order to use in our mail merge functionality. Now, for those of you who have never used mail merge, if you're inside of a Word document, like so, if you go to the mailings tab, so this little one right here, and then you go to the start mail merge section, this is basically gonna kick off the process of doing mail merge. Now, technically I already have a data source in here, but if you look in the select recipients, you would see that you have a couple different options. This is going to help define our data source. So you have two options. You can either type a new list or you can use an existing list. Now there's also this additional option, which is you can use contacts, but that's for a different topic. That's kind of its own little data source in its own name. But what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing you how to use an Excel spreadsheet as your data source. So we're gonna walk through the process of creating a connection to our Excel spreadsheet, and then from there using that as our data source. Now, once it is loaded, you would actually be able to see it in this edit recipients list. So this is ideally what it's gonna load into. So this is what we're gonna see after we create our connection and being able to see all the information. So ideally, this is what we want to see as our final product to validate that we were able to successfully connect to that data source and load it into our Word document. So let's get started. You're gonna to go to your developer tab. I'm assuming you have it enabled. And then from here, you're gonna to go to your visual basic icon. And once you are inside of here, you might see a couple different things related to your projects. Uh, the first one will be your normal project. So this is kind of like your personal macro workbook, but this is specifically for Word. And then from here, you're gonna see your second project down here. So this is gonna be the current document that you have open. And assuming that it is a uh, Word document that enables macros, you should be able to specify things like creating a new module. So once you're here, you're gonna right click, go down to insert, and then module. And then once it does that, you're gonna see a new modules down here in the modules folder. Um, I already have one defined. You want to give it a name, something like mail merge test or something that, you know, you can kind of remind yourself what is inside of it. I just named mine mail merge data source video. 
If you want to rename it, it's fine. You just want to go down here to the properties window. And if you click in here, this is where you can change the name. And then from here, let's create a new subroutine. So we're going to create a new subroutine. We will call it mail merge uh, Excel to Word. And then this entire module is really built on connecting to a data source. So a few things that we're going to do right from the get go is we are going to define our variables like we've done in previous VBA videos. The first one is going to be our application. Again, this is just me being very explicit. We're not going to be using the application object heavily. But again, just for readability in the code, I like to define this particular object. Then we are going to be working with the active document. So I'm going to create a new variable called word active document. And then this will represent a document object. So an actual word document. Additionally, there is a mail merge object. So we are going to say we want to work with the mail merge object. And then with this particular object, we can do things like create a data source. We can find the document type and so much more. So the first thing is we're going to define that application. So define the application. And from here, we're going to set our word app equal to the application, just like that. And then from here, we're going to define the active document. Now, this exists inside of the application object. So we're going to define our word active document. And we're going to say, hey, set that equal to our word app. And you'll notice the second property down is the active documents. And so that will return the document that we are currently in. OK, and then from here, we can grab the mail merge object. So every document has a mail merge object. So grab the mail merge object. Again, this exists at the document level, document level. And so we're going to say word active document dot mail, not envelope, mail merge. So again, I don't think it's at the application object level. So you can see here there's nothing there. Um, you want to go to the document level, not the application level. OK, now when it comes to defining our data source, there's a couple things that kind of go on behind the scenes. <clears throat> um, one thing that happens is if you use the macro recorder, it does a lot of extra stuff there. Um, the one thing it does do for you is it defines your uh, your mail merge document type. Now, like I said before, mail merge can be used for different types of documents. Now, to give you an idea of the typical documents you would use, if you go back to the mailings tab, then if you go to the um, start mail merge, you will notice there's letters, email messages, envelopes, labels, and directories. So this is kind of like your document type. This is the type of document you could use with mail merge. By default, it's going to go with letters. That's usually the standard one. You can always change it. But in this series, we're going to go with the default one, which is letters. So if we go back to our Visual Basic editor, we're going to say step one is define the type of mail merge document. So we're going to say word mail merge. And then there is a main document type property. And you can see here, these are all the different enumerations. There's fax, envelopes, email, directory, all that kind of fun stuff. In our particular example, we want form letters. And just like that, we've defined step one. Now we need to define our data source. So our data source in this instance is going to be an Excel file. Now, in order to make your code a little bit more readable, I think it makes sense to define our data source as its own variable on its own line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here and define some more variables. But these ones are going to be related to our data source file path and then our data source connection string. So we're going to say Excel data source file. This will be a string. And then next, we're going to have data source connection string. This is going to be another string as well. So now that we've defined these two, let's set their values. Step two, specify the location of the data source. 
So we're going to say Excel data source file, and then we're just going to grab the file path. There's different ways to do that. I could technically go into here and grab it. So I'm going to go to file and then I'm going to go to info and then I'm going to do copy path. I hope it doesn't copy the URL path, but I'm not confident if it does. Oh, it did. Of course it did. That's the problem with this stuff. Um, bum, bum, bum. Where did I put it? VBA word. Mail merge, copy path. There we go. <clears throat> That's the thing when you do copy path, it does double quotes for you already. So this is the location of our of our file. Now that we've done that, let's define our connection string. So step three, define the connection string. Okay, we've seen this in previous videos, so I'm gonna reiterate it again. Connection strings can cause a lot of issues because you put an extra space in there, you put an extra semicolon, you don't do the line breaks appropriately. Guess what? It's going to return an error and it's not going to give you an indication as to what that error is. So. The way I'm about to type it, you need to type it exactly as I show it to you. Otherwise, there is a good chance it will not work and you'll be stuck there going, what's happening? I hate connection strings with a burning passion. Provider equals Microsoft dot ace OLEDB dot 12.0 semicolon double quote space what is that underscore? Because we're going to be doing it on multiple lines. Okay, then from here, ampersand, double quote, user space ID, all caps, admin, semicolon, underscore, ampersand, and we're going to be keep doing this pattern. The data source, this is the important one, equals space plus sign, Excel, data source, file, plus double quote, semicolon, double quote, space, ampersand, mode, we're going to be in read mode, semicolon, and then from here, what is this one? Underscore, ampersand, extended, extended properties equals triple quotes, space, underscore, ampersand, e uh, double quote, HDR. This is short for headers. This is all upper case. So we're saying our data source has headers. So there's a header row. That's what that line's going to tell BBA. IMEX, no idea what that is. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Some of these I've used in the past, some of these other ones, not so much. This is where the connection string can get a little bit messy. So it goes IMEX one semicolon, double quotes, and then another semicolon. It's really weird. I don't know exactly what's going on, but it gives this really weird connection string. And then there's these final two lines. The next one is JET. O L E D B and then system uh, space lowercase database equals four quotes and then like that. And then the final line is jet O L E D B colon regist. And that's literally it, regist. That is your connection string. This is the driver. We've seen this before. My assumption here is this is probably saying, you know, the user ID, it's like, okay, the system user, right? So it's just me, the admin, right? That's kind of like, you know, when you connect to SQL. Data source, that's kind of self-explanatory. That's just our data source file mode. We're going in read mode. Obviously in this situation, we don't want to edit the document. We're just grabbing data from it. So that makes sense. Extended properties. This tends to go along with this, and I believe this as well. So headers, I know this one specifies that the first row is header. 
IMAX, no idea. No idea what that covers. <laughs> and then there's these other two. Um, I've never seen these ones before. This was actually the first time I've seen these two specific attributes related to a connection string. My guess is it's probably something related to the fact of we're reading this from Word and we're not like doing it as like a user. It's kind of like the system user thing. So I'm not really sure what these two are doing, but I'm assuming it's probably related to the fact that we're doing an OLLBD connection, but we're doing it in this like unique way where we're not like passing through a password or anything like that. So it's kind of like the ODBC connection string, but this one it's like, oh, well, we're just gonna do like a trusted connection. That's that's kind of how I saw it. I'm not sure if that's like the specific way we should be thinking about it, but this is the first time I've ever seen these two attributes inside of a connection string. So if you guys know, by all means, share away, because I would be very happy to see what that is all about. Okay, so next we are going to do step four. Create a connection, or really, I'll be more specific open a connection to the data source. Okay, so we are going to take our word mail merge object. And guess what? There is an open data source method. With this one, we need to provide a few different parameters. The first one is the data source or the name. In this situation, um, by default, it does use the the name of the file. Um, I guess here I'll change it and we'll see what happens. I haven't done it without the default one, but we'll see what happens. I'll call this um, my, my companies or something like that, right? So we'll do that. I'm going to do some line breaks just for some readability. And then the next one is going to be a link to the source. So we want to create like a link, a connection to it that we definitely want to have true. Then the next one is the connection. And so this one is just the connection string. And then finally, we need the SQL statement. This one is simply the, the SQL query to select the data. So in this situation, it's basically the sheet name. And so in this case, it's going to be these little tildes, and then it's going to be invoices, dollar sign, and then we're going to close it, our little backwards one. Now, if you record it using the macro recorder, you get a much bigger mess. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, oh, no, it deleted it. So basically, sorry, my file crashed earlier when I was writing the code. So of course I lost my original recording, which I wasn't happy about, but it is what it is. It basically has like 25 different parameters that you can specify. I started deleting one by one and seeing if it still worked at a minimum. It looks like you need at least these four, which kind of makes sense. Like, I don't even think technically you need this one, I think you need this one, this one, and then this one. Um, I could probably just look and see what it says here if I was being smart about it. So open data source, you need a name and that's it. I guess you really only need a name. <laughs> In our particular situation, that's not much help because we've defined a data source, there's just no data with it. Um, I would say, yeah, it looks like you only need a name but you can see here too, like there's a ton of other parameters that are going to be set for you. So there's like read only, add to recent files, password document, password template, write password document, write password template, connection, you know, just lots of different stuff, just tons of different stuff here. And then subtype SQL statement. So if your SQL statement is longer than 255 characters, then you can use SQL statement one as an additional one to specify. And they give you some examples, albeit these are relatively simple examples. So I don't think any of them really went into a significant amount of uh, detail with some of these ones, but it is there. So technically that's all you need at a minimum to at least define a data source for your mail merge. So we're gonna run it, not positive it's gonna work. And then, <laughs> 
Um, sure, we'll do this. Okay, so it looks like that name didn't work too well. I'm gonna put it back to this one and we'll see what happens. That time it worked fine, so that that's a good sign. I think what I'm also gonna do is I am gonna put this in a separate document. See, this is from when I first had the first crash. I'm gonna put this in a, another one, um, just just again to just to make sure it works. I want to try it in a different document just so I feel confident that what I'm giving you is what it should be. So here you go. We'll put this here. And then from here, I want to make sure I'm in this document and then I'm going to run it again, hoping nothing happens. OK, this is good. And it looks like, uh, yeah, looks good. So it looks like that was it. It looks like it, it imported it correctly. So it looks like this code does work. So you can dump, you know, dump it into another workbook if you wanted to, and then you could change it all you want. But that at a minimum is creating a data source that you can use for mail merge. So I'm gonna cut off the video here. In our next video, we're gonna take this data source and we're just gonna play around with it a little bit more. I wanna kind of show you the different objects that are technically part of it and things that you can do with those objects. A lot of them are more informative. They're not necessarily doing a ton for you. I will talk about one that actually caused my Word VBA to crash, and that was related to searching for records. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And then additionally, we'll talk about an IntelliSense bug that I have not found a workaround for related to our data source. So if you have any questions at this point, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you in video number two.